morning, Quadcopter101 here. Before we get started, let's get the sh today's shout-out out of the way. Today's shout-out goes to Kevin Verspoy. He was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus was this shout-out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter101 here, and what I got for you today is a review of another uh, brushed motor folding toy-grade uh, GPS drone. <laughs> this is the SHRC H1G. Uh, again, it is another GPS drone, a folding one, uh, all very similar to the DJI Spark. Most of them all are very similar in shape to that. Uh, you open it up the arms like so, and there you go. It, now, what's special about it? Again, GPS means it can automatically maintain position and will automatically come home and return, return to home to you and land where it took off from on command, on loss of signal, and on low voltage. Uh, the camera that it has, it is a camera bird, is a 720p uh, camera. Uh, there's also a 1080p version, of, but I got the uh, 720p. Now, this is available in two, two different versions. One that uses 5G Wi-Fi, 802.11ac Wi-Fi. Let me say that instead of 5G. And this one here, which uses 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz is available on most phones, so most people can use this particular drone. But the 2.4 gigahertz version has a 720p camera. Now, the 5G version supposedly has a 1080p camera, uh, but that's not the one that I got. Now, there's one thing about this. I think both of them might have the same problem. But this drone does not have a micro SD card slot to store recorded video. Instead, the video is transmitted directly to your phone via Wi-Fi and recorded directly to your phone. Well, that's all well and good, you know, but there is going to be issues because Wi-Fi video usually has uh, frame dropping, uh, frozen video. Uh, it's It has issues with <laughs> transmitting that video. It's not going to be smooth recorded video. That's So that's a minus um, that this does not have an SD card slot. And I'm starting to see that a lot in recent uh, drones that I've been reviewing that they're not including the SD card slot anymore, you know, to record SD. Uh, it's, I'm sure it's a cost-saving measure along with a weight-saving measure, but it, it really is detrimental to the video that you were able to record with a drone. Um, let's see, other things that you get with the drone, you get the controller, I'll, I'll go over the controller here shortly, but let me show the other things you get. You also get the uh, charger and a proprietary battery that goes with the drone. You get a spare set of propellers and propeller screws and a screwdriver to uh, change these uh, propellers in case you have problems. You get a very nice carrying case, i got to say that. <laughs> it comes with this to store the drone. And you get instruction manuals on how to use the drone and how to use the app that goes with this particular drone. One thing about this instruction manual, it's in Chinese and in English, but it's very, very, very small print, and I actually have to use a magnifying glass. You know, if you're my age, you're probably going to need to use a magnifying glass to read that particular app. Now, I, I mentioned it does uh, return to home on uh, loss of signal, command, and low voltage, and also it's predicted to have an FPV, well, the 5G version, is predicted to have a FPV range of about 300 meters. Uh, this is a 2.4 gigahertz version, so I'm going 2.4 gigahertz. The pro another problem with 2.4 gigahertz is that this transfer controller is operating on the same frequency as the Wi-Fi of this drone, so they interfere with each other. So expect reduced ranges with the 2.4 gigahertz version of approximately, I'm going to say about 60 to 70 meters. We'll see how well the Wi-Fi works when I take it out in the field to fly it. Now, this uses the HR GPS app, available on Google Play and iTunes. Uh, but, and special features this has, you can use this controller to activate them, uh, vice just using the app, okay? Now, I've been having problems, with, again, i got to say this again. Recent versions of apps that I've been testing with these drones have been somewhat problematic in regards to Circle Me, Follow Me, and Waypoints. Those are the three biggies that, you've been see that I've been seeing recently on these GPS drones. But this one's a little bit different in that you can activate Circle Me by this button here on the controller and Follow, my, follow Me by this button here also on the controller instead of using the app. So we're, we're going to see how well that actually works when we fly it. Other buttons on the controller is this button here is for rates. That increases the pitch of the drone to enable it to fly faster. And this button here is for return to home and landing. You can manually press this button and the drone will automatically come back to you and land at where it took off from. This button here is for taking photos. And this button here or is for starting and stopping video recordings. It does have automatic takeoff and automatic landing, which you activate by those two buttons there. 
and you can turn off the GPS if, in case you want to fly indoors by with altitude hold mode by pressing this button here. And finally, uh, you can manually inst ins er, start compass calibrations, and compass calibrations are important for all GPS drones by pressing this button here, and I will demonstrate that when we go flying with this thing. Um, I mentioned the 7.4 volt, 850 milliamp per hour battery, proprietary battery. Uh, this is supposed to give you a flight time of 15 minutes. Um, I'm kind of suspect of that, but we'll find out what, if it, what its real flight time is when we fly it again today. So let's take this out to my, one of my local favorite parks around here and fly it and see how it performs. So hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and we are out at one of my favorite flying fields here with the SHRC H1G. Let's go right into folding this thing or flying this thing. Uh, first off, let's point the drone in the direction we want the headless mode direction to be, and we'll say it that way there. And then we'll hold down its on off switch on the bottom there, right there, or on the top right there, and the light should be flashing rapidly. Okay, to connect the drone, we got the, to the quad car, or the controller, you turn on the controller. And move up and down. Actually, I think it automatically connected. Let's double check if the rapid flashing has stopped. And now it's slow flashing. Okay, first thing we need to do is the compass calibration. And to activate that, we press and hold this button here. And, that, and we hear a beep when you let go. And notice the lights are now rapidly blinking. So we do horizontal rotation like so. Four of them. Two. Actually, let me let me do this in my other hand without my watch. Three, and then four, and then it says do vertical rotation, like so. One, two, three, four. All lights are wrapped, still rapidly blinking. And five. I'm waiting for a beep. Okay, going back to horizontal again. Two. Let's do it by hand. Maybe I'm not going fast enough. Two. Three. Four. Oh, there we go. You have to wait until you hear that beep, and then it's satisfied that the uh, compass calibration is completed. And I guess I should have went faster there at the end. Okay, so now we're waiting for satellites. When it has sufficient satellites, the lights go solid. They're still looking for satellites right now, slow blinking right now. But in the meantime, while it's looking for satellites, I'm going to uh, turn on the app and connect to it uh, over 2.4 gigahertz since I got the 2.4 gigahertz version. So hold on, folks. Okay, this is the HR GPS app available on Google Play and iTunes. And by the way, I just heard a beep on my controller just now. Uh, about 30 seconds after I said, hold on, folks. And that might mean that we have sufficient satellites. And let me double check. Yeah, all lights are solid, green and red. So we are good to fly. Uh, let's open up the app and take a look here. And see if we got FPV. And we do, FPV reception. Um, we are more or less ready to go. How many satellites? We have nine satellites. So uh, first off, let's try the automatic takeoff button. See if that works. Probably not. You probably need to start the motors first. And if that's true, down and out, down and in, or down and in seems to start it, and then automatic takeoff. And there we go. Okay, let's check that stability. Go up a little bit higher. And it is very stable. So we got uh, <laughs> good stability, or that compass calibration obviously worked. Let's come down a little lower and start the video camera using the controller. I want to use the controller to start it and stop everything. So pressing the video camera button. And video recording has started. And syncing up the camera with my lips by doing this. Okay, we are recording now. Uh, first off, let's go up a bit higher and do a rotate around the area to show the camera. Slowly going up with the GPS. I'm going to step back a bit too. So I don't have to crane my neck up so high. Okay, how high are we? It says two feet, but three feet. <laughs> that is not right. Those are probably meters, folks. Although it's saying feet, that's probably meters, and it's not three meters either. We are way up there, about good uh, 15, 20 feet. 
But while we're there, let's rotate. Slowly turning, 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 turning to the right. And showing the camera. And it's remaining more or less motionless up there as I turn this camera. So that is the view from the camera. I'm not sure if I'm getting props on the top or, or pops in the view, but if, if I am, folks, keep in mind I could lower that uh, camera a bit. And the reason I'm not sure if I'm getting the props in the view is if you notice on my FPV screen there, that blue bar at the top, that kind of blocks the full view of the camera. So there might be props showing there. Okay, so that's the video camera. Let's come down lower, descending, and also I'm going forward a bit. Let's follow these geese around. Uh, they're taking off too fast. Any more geese around here? Yeah, there are. Let's go over and follow the, take a look at the geese with this drone. Coming down lower. And heading to, oh, there goes a couple of geese right by me now. They're running away. They know I'm after them. <laughs> Come here, geese. Come back here. <laughs> I don't know if they're showing up or not. <laughs> yeah, they were. I saw it. just saw it. Oh, they're all running away. <laughs> so, okay, but there's still some left over on the other end of the field. So let's try out the range of this FPV. We're going to head toward the geese. Off in that direction there. Now I'm not going to go real fast. I'm hopefully I won't scare them too bad. There's some geese right there. I'm flying FPV toward them. Distance 380 feet. I don't think so. Well, maybe it is. Maybe that is about 380 feet. No, that's not 100. Well, I'd say I'm a, a good 50 meters away, which would be about half of that. Flying over the geese. So the FPV is actually working rather well. I'm just kind of surprised since this is a 2.4 gigahertz flyer. Let's come down lower and go toward those geese. Come down even more. Let's go back toward the geese. Coming down low this time. Right about there. Okay. A little bit higher. Right about there. That's a good altitude. And heading toward the geese. Are they going to get excited? Oh, yeah, they're getting excited. They're starting to move. And there they go. Turning to the left, and then coming back again. Coming back toward me. That worked all the way over there. That was about 80 meters. Not too bad. Okay, let's try the return to home and landing. Before we do that, let's come down again. And the reason I want to do that is I want to start and stop the camera, video camera, using the video camera switch, which is here. And starting the video camera. And then I want to try to circle me. Oh, it's going over there. I used the circle me on the controller. And what's it going to do from there? It turn, turns toward me. Let's start to, is the video camera recording? No, it's not. Let's start it up. And there it goes circle me. What's it circling? This position here, I guess. Where it was that when I hit circle me? Seems to be climbing a little. So Circle B works real well with this. This one ain't too bad. And the camera, looking at the camera, not too bad. I'm sure there's probably jello. <laughs> Keep in mind, folks, this is a toy drone. If you expect uh, studio quality video from these toy drones, <laughs> ain't gonna happen. But that Circle B's working fine. And again, I used the Circle B on the controller. On this app, I gotta say it right now, the app is kinda buggy. Turn it off. Circle B. How about the follow me? Let's come back over here again, toward me. Go by me, right over here. And they say to be within 10 meters of it. That's kind of unusual, because they normally tell you to be 30 meters away. But am I showing up? Okay, I'm showing up. Now I'm hitting uh, the follow me button, which is the one in the back, right? And let's see if it follows me. Please follow me. Walking away, walking to the left. Mm, is it following me? 
Is it pointing toward me? I don't think so. So that follow me button did not work. Pressing it again. Something just happened there. <laughs> I don't know what's pointing at. What it's doing. I pressed the follow me button and it turned around. Pressing it again. Is it following me? Pressing the follow me again. Okay. It, it moved for a bit there. Keep pressing the follow me button and it turned toward me that time. Pressing the follow me button again. <laughs> pressing the follow me button again. Yeah, doesn't seem to work. Let's see if we can get it to work through the app. Pressing the follow me in the app, which is that squiggly line. Oh, something happened that time. But is it following me? Is it? It is following me. So the button on the controller for follow me didn't work, but the button me on or the button on the app seemed to work. So let's see if I can walk away and have it follow. Ah, there we go. So the app. You need to use the app to use the follow me feature. Um, the button on the controller just didn't seem to work with it. But once I pressed the button on the app, that seemed to work. So that's working well. Let's see if I walk toward it. Let's come down lower too. It wants to land. I don't want it to land. What I want to do is, okay, let's come out of follow me if that's still on. Going into the app, that's off. Going back to controllers. And let's go down to the end of the field here. Halfway down to the end of the field. Over here. And try return to home and landing. Okay, I am there about, I'd say about 70 meters away from its takeoff point. Hitting the return to home button. And let's see it do that. Return to home and landing. Here it comes across the field. Heading back to its takeoff point. Actually, did I land somewhere else before? <laughs> Can't remember, but we'll see. No, it looks like it's going to its takeoff point. I'm not doing anything. It's automatic return to home and landing. Let's see how accurate it is. Not bad. Not bad at all. Turning off the video camera. Okay, how much battery? We don't have much battery power left, so for the remainder, I'm going to do photos, and then we're going to try waypoints, see if we can get waypoints to work. Uh, waypoints usually never works for these <laughs> toy drones, but we'll see if it does. Okay, uh, starting the motors, they were down and in. Down and in starts the motors. Automatic takeoff. I'm going up a bit higher, and pressing the photo button this time. Let's get in closer. Smile. Look up higher, smile, show those pretty teeth. <laughs> okay, <laughs> one more. <laughs> Come down here. <laughs> okay, let's try waypoints. See if it actually works. Uh, waypoint. Oh, I don't know. Well, no, it crashed. It crashes the app. I, it, it was doing this at home too, folks. I don't know why, but it crashes the app. Waypoints with the HR GPS and I don't see waypoints actually advertised for this drone <laughs> in the advertisements let's start the video camera again and explain that to you but if you see the ads for this drone uh, you don't see waypoint you see follow me and circle me advertised but you don't see waypoints and I think it's because the app is still buggy they haven't figured it out you know uh, cor fully corrected problems with the app so for the remainder of the flight let's just show its camera Actually, I haven't done any uh, high-speed flying. Let's go to higher rate and see how it performs at high rate. What's it doing? I hit high rate and it thinks it's circle me. I did not hit the circle me button, folks. I hit the high rate button, but it's circling again. <laughs> so the, the left two buttons seem to be hooked up to circle me. I'm going to press that again and see if it stops. No, that increased the rate of the circle. <laughs> Pressing the rate button. 
the circle speed increases. Let's see if I can come out of that by just increasing throttle, pitching forward. Will that break out of circle me? Okay, that broke out of circle me by giving it a pitch. Okay, let's. we're at high rate right now. Let's see how this flies at high rate. Actually, not too bad. Very good. Nice pitch on it. Going over here. Coming around over here. Wow. It moves. <laughs> so, very good. Nice flyer. Okay. Coming back down again. So, no, not a, not a bad beginner's drone. Um, the biggest, again, the biggest thing against it, though, is the absence of the SD card recording capability. Uh, you know, you're going to see lots of frame dropping, lots of frozen frames because of the Wi-Fi. But then again, most folks aren't using this toy drone to produce uh, quality video for uploading, I mean, for uh, commercial purposes. This is more than fine for a beginner learning to fly. Uh, who wants a camera? And it's, let me get in the view. <laughs> and what's well, a little bit of uh, video, ed, uh, video capability. Uh, most people don't want to download to their phone either, you know, or don't download to their computer to do video editing. They want it directly to go to their phone so that they can upload to social media. Say, look what I did today, folks. And this is more than good enough for doing that. So not a bad drone so far. Let's go over to that group of geese over there now and bother them. Oh, going back to low rate. Again, we were in high rate. That makes, by the way, when you're flying in high rate, it makes for very, very choppy video. And I'm trying to hold the back of my camera, point it toward the drone so the video will look somewhat smooth. Hello, geese. Am I bothering you? They don't seem to mind. How about if I turn around and go the other way? Past them. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave them alone. Some of my viewers might not appreciate me doing that with the snow geese. But they poop a lot in this field. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the big nuggets around here, but they're not dogs. You think it's dog nuggets, but no, it's geese. <laughs> field is full of it. <laughs> it's full of it. Okay, one last flight. Let's take it out. Since this battery is getting low, I want to see what it does on low battery. And for that in mind, I want to go down to the far end of the field. Is it going to block me? Is it going to come in? A 20% battery power is when it usually... I'm going to walk with it down to the other end of the field so I can maintain video on it too because I know it'll freeze up at about 60, 70 meters since this is a 2.4 gigahertz flyer. And feel that wind picking up. Doesn't seem to mind the wind at all. Doing well in the wind. Here, I got the sun behind me there, so I know I'm showing up as a shadow. Okay, how far are we? 380 feet away from its takeoff point. So let's go even further. Yeah, right about there is good. Going up higher. And again, I'm waiting for 20% battery power. That's when this thing is going to, I know it's going to, um, should return to home on that low battery. On loss of signal from the controller, or on low battery, or on command. Those are the three ways these return to home and land all by themselves. And that's why they're good for beginners flyers. It makes it hard for beginners to have flyaways unless they don't do a compass calibration which I'm again I gotta stress the importance of doing compass calibrations I saw the directions for this they said you only need to do the compass calibration once uh, that's that's iffy -fee, folks if you do that you should do it for each flight but okay uh, what have we done oh there we go 20% it just gives me a warning, but is it going to fly home? No, it gives you a beeping warning on your controller, which probably tells you get closer, bring it home closer, which we will 
do. I'm not going to fly all, all the way to the pad. Okay, I'm just going to fly around the area relatively close to the pad and see if it drops a low battery or if it returns to home and lands. Now again, when you hear this low battery beeping, you really should be bringing the drone back home to you, close to you, close to its takeoff point so that it doesn't have a long distance to fly to get home on that low battery. And we're good to hear it about, I'm saying about 20 meters away. So we'll fly around this area here. Oh, there it goes. What was that? 10%. And it does its return to home and landing at 10%. Okay, I'm not doing anything. It brought itself over here and it goes back. That's where it thinks it took off from this time. And lands itself. And I'll turn off of the video camera. And turn off the controller. And turn off the drone. So that's the SHRC H1G. It's actually not a bad beginner's GPS drone. I kind of like it. So hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.